Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion node breakdown. Today's node is the Aperture Diffraction node. And this is another uh, DaVinci Resolve FX available within Fusion. And uh, just so you know, this is studio version only effect. And I believe the last few we did, I kind of failed to uh, let you know they're studio version only. So if you're in the free version trying to go over these and you don't see them, that's because it's studio version only. And uh, this effect is definitely studio version only. So we're going to jump into Fusion and I'm going to add an Aperture Diffraction. And what the Aperture Diffraction node is, is it basically adds lens diffractions onto your footage. So all those little shiny bits that are coming out to make your footage a little more exciting. Now, before I jump into this, I'm going to go ahead and input it, but I'm going to talk about these alpha mass light sources and alpha limit effects because they don't quite work exactly how they're meant to work with infusion. And I'm going to remove this and we're going to jump over to the color page real quick because this is a DaVinci Resolve effect. And this is where you would normally use it if you uh, were color grading and adding this effect. So I'm going to go ahead and add a uh, serial node. And I'm also going to add a uh, parallel node. Sorry, I'm a little slow today, but I'm going to get rid of this uh, little mixer and I'm going to bring our RGB in and then our alpha from this one into our alpha. So on this, we have our regular footage and on this, I'm going to throw a qualifier on. So uh, let's grab a qualifier and I'm just going to grab this light. And if I go here and add the uh, aperture diffraction, you can see we've got our light and this is how this is meant to work. So if I go to our aperture diffraction and I uncheck this uh, alpha effects, you can see now our entire image is affecting. If I check it, just our alpha and then this alpha limits the effect. If I check that, it's going to limit it even more based off that alpha. But if I go into fusion, number one, we don't necessarily have alphas going in here. So if I uncheck and check, uncheck and check, we are getting no change, even though we do have alpha channels, but we don't have a specific alpha going in here. So to remedy this within uh, fusion, we need to build this a little different for this node to use these alphas correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this media in, and I'm going to paste it. We're going to add a, channel boolean or boolean channel boolean channel boolean however you want to pronounce it today and i'm going to input our uh, original footage into the background this new one into the foreground and on this one that's into the foreground i'm going to uh throw a little mask on so if i look at our mask let's just change it up so we can move it around how we want to move it around and then our Boolean node, I'm going to leave it to copy, but I'm going to change our red to the background, green to background, blue to background, and leave our alpha on the foreground. So now if we look at it, we've got this. So you can see we've got our alpha with our little ellipse here that we can move around. And then instead of going straight into our uh, aperture diffraction, I'm going to go from our Boolean into our aperture diffraction. If I look at this, now you can see we've got those uh, alphas in there correctly, or you may, you may not. If I uncheck this, you can see over here our alphas affecting correctly. But if I check this alpha limits, it kind of screws up our image. So this alpha limits effect doesn't really work very well in fusion. But if I leave this checked and I go to our little ellipse, you can see as I drag this around, it's only affecting within our mask. So we can use this mask to drive where we want that effect if we need it in a specific place. So let's go ahead and change this and make sure we're covering uh, our entire little door here. So now we're limiting our effect to just around this light within the store. And once we've got our little effect set up correctly on our uh, aperture diffraction node, we've got different outputs. And right now we're looking at the final, 
But a good way to build this is if you notice, we've got all these uh, different controls, the isolation, the aperture, the diffraction, and the compositing controls. So we're gonna kind of go in a row to set these. So if I initially go to my isolated source, now I'm only looking at my isolated source. And within here, I can go ahead and change my color mode if I want to slow color or fast grayscale. I can change the brightness to hone in that look. I can change my gamma and I can change my smooth. Now, even though we're getting these looks, once we do our final, we may come back in here and make some adjustments or changes. Now our color filter is basically the color filter of the light. So we can come in here and select that light if that's the color filter we want to use. And under our morph operations, this acts just like the uh, alpha matte shrink and grow that we used uh, yesterday, I believe. So we can shrink it. We can grow it. We can adjust our openings. We can adjust our closings. So once we've got our isolated source the way we want it, we can move to our uh, aperture preview. And this is what our aperture looks like. And within our aperture settings, we can change our iris shape so we can make it a triangle if we want. We can change the size. We can change the blade curvature if we want. We can rotate it, change the horizontal and vertical ratio, change our angle and uh, adjust our chroma shift. And once we've got our aperture looking the way we want it, we can look at our diffraction pattern. And this is based off of our aperture. So if you notice, we still have the aperture controls and we also have diffraction controls. So in here we can change the uh, result gamma and the result scale, as well as readjust anything within the aperture that we want to adjust. And then we can look at our uh, diffraction patterns by themselves. And you notice all these open back up. So we can go to our isolation controls and we can adjust anything we need to. We can change our gamma down. We can shrink it a little bit to get rid of some of that smaller stuff. And again, we can go back in and change our aperture. So if I rotate this, you can see our little, uh, diffractions are rotating as well as readjust the result scale and the gamma. And once we have that, we can go look at our final look and we can readjust anything we need to readjust. And then finally we have compositing controls. We can normalize or unnormalize the brightness. We can change the brightness. We can colorize it more if we want, and that's going to bring in some of those uh, halation colors. We can change the actual color if we want. So let's go ahead and preview the difference. So that is the aperture diffraction node. I will see you in the next node breakdown.